Hello and welcome to the second FAQ video in this series for C. This is a response to a user request for a quick video on two-dimensional arrays. And I've started here a program which has a one-dimensional array and prints out with the index the numbers stored in the one-dimensional array to the screen. So I'll just compile and run it and you can see it should be fairly self-explanatory if you've watched the tutorial videos on arrays what's happening here and I'm printing out like I said the indexing as well in fact I'll make this even clearer by putting an I in here like this and compiling and running again so this just tells us exactly how things are working so what's a two-dimensional array then well a two-dimensional array is actually very simple say we have we need to declare four lots of three arrays, of, of arrays of three. So we'll call it array one. You don't need to type this out here, it's just um, inside a comment for an example. We have the numbers one, two, and three. And let's say that we've got in this one the number four, and I'm sure you can see where this is going five and six, nine, eight, seven, and ten, eleven. And 12. And this is array 1, array 2, array 3, and a four, array 4. Now let's say that we access each of these arrays, and it which array we access depends on, say, say these are directions for a motor car. And depending on which motor car you have, it, it takes different, it has a different array of directions that it can take in an application. So you might end up in your program saying something like if car equals 1, so car 1, then use array 1 and do stuff. Else, and you get the idea here, is car equals car 2, use array 2, and it can end up a bit of a pain obviously because if you ever need to add more arrays or anything in the program you're going to start ending up with a lot of if else's and, and things like that. But and a better way to do this would then be to store these values in what's called a two-dimensional array. So what you could do is you could say int and 2d array and now you could say okay I want four lots of arrays of three integers in this way. And the way you would then write this, or syntax and store this, is like so. So you would have your first array and a comma, your second array and a comma, your third array and a comma, and your fourth array with no comma because it's the last one. And now we've got a two-dimensional array saying we have got four lots of arrays of three. And they're exactly the same as our four one dimensional arrays just stored all together. And now if you had say car 1 had a value of naught and you wanted the directions for car 1 rather than saying if car equals 1 or car equals 2 you already know so you could simply say okay I need the values for car 1 I want to loop through all the directions then you would make a loop that simply loops through naught 1 and 2 and you would then index like so. One and two. And then that would be equal to the value of one, equal to the value of two, and equal to the value of three. And that's how you would then use a 2D array to clean things up much better. And then you only need, when you're getting nil directions, one loop to loop through the values and you just set this value at first here to specify which array you're looping through rather than have lots of if-else and separate loop statements. So if I just clean this up now because that's a bit of a sort of theoretical example and I'm going to put the again the indexing how that happens here. So the indexing is always like so and these are all this array all this array is index naught all of this array and this array, this array is at index 1, this array is at index 2, 
And this array is at index 3, and I'll just space this out a little better so it's readable. And then to access the actual numbers on each row, for example, if we wanted to access the 3 here, well, that lies at index 2 on its row, because it index 0, index 1, index 2. The 4 lies at index 0. So this will give us the 3, this will give us the 4. And if we wanted the 8 here, obviously that's at index 1. And let's say we want the 12, where well you can see that's at index 2. And that's how we use our two-dimensional array then to access the values. So to loop through the values and print them to the screen, it should be fairly clear now what we need. We need one loop that loops 0, 1, 2, 3. And for each loop that it starts, we need an inner loop looping 0, 1, and 2 before going to the next row, and then looping 0, 1, and 2. And to do that, we use an outer and inner loop, and we're going to use i and j. So we have our outer loop here, and I'll change this now to 2D array, and I'm going to change what we print out now to print out j as well. And to print our value. So just to reiterate here, our value that we get from the array is in the format then or will be in the format now of i j which is why I've got i j here so that we've got our outer loop going with i from 0 to 4 so the 0 1 2 3 but now we need to go in for each of these we need to go 0 1 and 2 so we make a loop inside this And we'll make this j, and this, like I said, goes from 0 up to, to, to less than 3, so up to 2. And now I'll save this, and now let's just compile this program and run. And obviously I've done this, oops, I've not changed that to a j, which caused a nice error. And there we have now the 2D array. We've got i is 0. And then we loop j is 0, 1, and 2, and get the values 1, 2, and 3. And then i is 1, and we loop through 0, 1, and 2 for j, and we get 4, 5, and 6. And so on, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So that's a quick overview of how 2D arrays, you can loop through the values in a 2D array, and an application of how they're then used to make the program code smaller and easier, and also easier to add to. So I hope that answers the question. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.